Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for today's podcast because oftentimes people always say their favorite podcasts are the ones with our uh, current or past coaching clients. And today we have a current coaching client with a special twist. But before we talk to our guests, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Just a little reminder, today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. And not just Flight School, Flight School Live. Wouldn't it be great to take 16 weeks of Flight School and compress it into a get-her-done three-day weekend? Learn more. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Scott Todd will be there as your head Sherpa. Tate will be there. And um, as it grows, the other coaches. So today's guest is Austin Krychek. Now, I'm going to put on my, my anchorman voice for a second. <laughs> Austin's a big deal, right? A professional <laughs> tennis player. In fact, Austin, I don't even think I can do you, do you justice. So kind of give us a little bit of your, of your bio. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Um, thanks for having me here, Mark. I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, yeah, I, I play tennis full time. Um, I went to college at Texas A&M University and um, played four years there and I've been on the tour now for, um, uh, it's coming up on eight years now. So been traveling around the world full time and, um, at, um, 39 in the world right now, um, in doubles. So I, um, play some of the, some of the bigger tournaments and, and basically live out of a suitcase. So it, uh, a lot of times it sounds a little better than it actually is, but it, but it's pretty cool. We get to do something we love, uh, play a sport and, um, and travel around the world. So, um, it's, it's really exciting, um, for sure. I mean, that's, that's really, really cool. Um, yeah. we have a few, uh, professional athletes in land geek. In fact, we, I'd like to have like a round table with the, the professional athletes, but being 39th in the world, Austin, you are the most celebrated of our <laughs> professional athletes. So, which begs the question, why land geek? How did you yeah. find this? No, it's, uh, it, it's kind of funny. I, um, yeah, I, like I said, I, I travel around quite a bit. So we play all the grand slams and, and all over the world, but, um, you know, obviously with tennis, you have a good bit of free time, I'm, as I would imagine with any other professional sport. Um, there's only so much time that you can, you know, beat up your body in training and so forth. So, you know, we find ourselves, especially on, on long airplane rides, um, kind of sitting there and, and thinking. So uh, a couple of years ago, actually, I was playing a tournament in um, China and um, a small town for, for China's, um, uh, for their standards of just a couple million people. So it was in Anning, actually. And um between practices, I was kind of sitting there and, and kind of realized how much time we wasted. It just kind of hit me and um, saw some of the other players at the tournaments. Um, you know, obviously Netflix is a big thing for us over there watching shows and so forth. So I just realized how much time I was wasting and could have been using it, um, you know, in a, in a better way. Um, so I just started looking at the podcast app and found a few different podcasts and started following that and, and had a couple books in my bag that I hadn't picked up in a while. So I read those and, and um, it kind of put me on a, a tangent of the next six months. I read over a hundred books and started really getting into the financial side of things just really interested me and then and, um, and got an audible and things like that. So the two times speed helped me get through, you know, that many things um, in podcasts. I mean, I was into, you know, uh, well over 50 different podcasts, which is, which is a job in itself just to keep up with everything. And um yeah, sort of really, really interested in, in building wealth and passive income and real estate, um, you know, but also stock market and following different things like that. So I kind of went down that path and um, and then came across one where you were actually being interviewed, um, the land geek himself, and, and really thought it was interesting that um, you could, um, you know, build passive wealth with a vehicle like land um, and not have to worry about the tenants and property management and so forth. And um, and that was probably, you know, six to eight months into, um, all of that kind of research. And we had actually bought a, my dad and I had bought a rental property, um, about four months into that. And, um, I love the idea of passive income in real estate. So we had some difficulties up front, um, with the tenant and property management. And I was like, man, this is really a pain to deal with, um, when I'm traveling with the paperwork and, um, that property we were able um, to 
purchased it with cash. So it wasn't, you know, so much the bank, the mortgage problem, but, um, you know, it was all the paperwork up front and so forth. So I was like, this would be a little bit simpler maybe. And, um, so I started following your podcast, listened to all the episodes and, um, and really enjoyed your book, um, as well. Uh, by the way, Dirt Rich was great. Um, Thank you. but yeah, it was awesome. But, um, anyways, you know, started going down that path and, and ended up talking to Mike Zeno and, and Scott Bossman about, um, flight school and, um, went through flight school with, with Scott just last August. I really enjoyed that. Um, it was a land map and, um, you know, all the, uh, like he says, you know, the recipes there is just following it and executing. So I really, yeah, let, let's, let's pull the curtain back on flight school because <laughs> a lot of the listeners, like they hear about flight school, but they don't really know what, what is that experience like? Cause like, I don't really go on a lot of the calls. I'll watch some of the recordings, but I'm kind of scared of Scott and the mini bat. What, <laughs> what was like your impression of Scott and flight school and how it was laid out and what did you like, you know, most about it? And, um, and yeah, how did it to accelerate you to the next level? It was great. I mean, it really, um, you know, got me going. I, I feel like I was, um, you know, I, I had done the, um, the toolkit originally and, um, you know, all the information's there, but, you know, like you guys say, it, it really helps to have someone there with a mini bed and pushing you to make the action. Um, you know, and I don't think, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say I was, you know, intimidated by Scott. I think it was awesome to, to be there and that wealth of knowledge that he has. Obviously, he's extremely successful. And, um, you know, if you're going to learn from, um, you know, I, I feel like um, if you're going to do something, the best way to do it is to learn from someone who's, a, who's, you know, basically a master editor, one of the best in the world. So um, I thought it was a, an honor to be in those classes. And, my, you know, my time schedule, obviously, with traveling in, in the time zones is so difficult. I wasn't able to make every single session live. Um, but that's what's so great about flight school is the recordings and the community. And so I was able to get all my questions answered and, and just work in it in real time and, and start mailing. And, you know, there's no question in that in that module, obviously, you're going to mail that day. So um, that was huge, you know, that I just took the action and did it, whether it was, you know, I did it perfectly or not. You know, it was just... Um, it was action. And um, so that just got me going. And then I was able to buy um, property from that not too long down the road and, and, um, and then get my first sale within um, just, uh, just a couple months. So it, um, you know, I did some things, you know, not, not perfectly at up front, which I'm sure is to be expected, but um, I really think that helped me kind of get into the, just get in the game and, and um, figure it out as you go. And, and I think that's the best way to do it. And that really got me going. And, and now, you know, I was able to sell a few properties at the end of last year and, and still, um, I, I saw the value in that. Um, so then I wanted to get into coaching and, and, um, I had a few calls with Tate, um, originally when I started flight school so that, you know, I think we had a good connection there and he's, you know, just as successful. And I think he's, um, a great role model as well. So, you know, we connected on some of the athletic sides. I know he did cycling for a while, which is really cool. Um, so I think um, he's a great mentor and um, trying to, you know, take advantage of as much as I can soak up from him as well. So, and just grow my business. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, to have Scott Todd jump in here, Scott, I don't know if you knew about Austin's background before he went to flight school, but I could imagine that here's a guy number 39 in the world, you know, he's got world-class tennis coaches helping him. And now, like you're stepping up for land investing. Listen, I, I, I did not know. I did not know who Austin was at all. Like I didn't know. And I'm floored right now, honestly. Like uh, I, I'm like doing like a Google search on Austin right now because I didn't know any of that. <laughs> and it's really kind of cool for me because, you know, th that's really what flight school is about. It's about helping people who want to transform their lives to create the passive income or to do whatever they want to do. And Austin's right. Like it's really about taking action and it's about getting it done and, you know, building that foundation. And uh, I, I'm, I'm looking at Austin's Wikipedia page right now. I'm like, wow, he was born in the same city as I am. That's pretty cool to know. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah, I grew up in Florida and, and went to college um, out in Texas A&M, but um, yeah, I'm. Uh, I was a great experience for me going through flight school and coaching, and um, you know, it's one of my big. Obviously, traveling so much, I feel like I'm away from home. Um, and you always talk about having the freedom to do what you want to do when, and and um, you know, that's one thing that I want down the road when I do settle down, have a family, and so forth, is to to be able to not be forced to to travel all the time and be away from home, and and um, you know, have the option to do it from wherever I'd like, and 
uh, yeah, it's been great. The land business, I think it's a great avenue for that. And, and um, I've still got a long way to go and so many things I can do better, but um, you know, that's uh, with, with sports and in general, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's, it's always a work in progress and there's always room to improve. So I feel like that's, um, you know, striving to just get better is, is what keeps me moving. So. Yeah. I mean, you know, coming from a, a professional athlete's mentality, um, I mean, to be world-class in anything is, is really, really hard. Right. So kind of like, what is that mentality? Like, you know, I, I play tennis. Um, I had, I took tennis lessons and, um, but I never became great. I was probably below average to average. Right. Like I really enjoyed it and I played a tournament. I got killed. I'm like, Oh, let's keep playing basketball. Right. So what, what is that difference? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, yeah, there, there's, it's the small things I think that make the difference. Um, like, like most um, professional sports, but tennis is kind of unique because um, it's one of the few sports where uh, every week, except maybe a couple weeks a year, um, you're going to lose. Um, so unless you're Roger Federer or Novak Djokovic nowadays who win, you know, a lot of tournaments, um, even if you have a great year, uh, there's only maybe two or three weeks a year where you're going to win the tournament. And um, which means that you're dealing with, with losing or failure quite a bit. Um, and tennis is really tough in that regard because you can have, you know, one of the best tournaments of your, of your career and make the finals, um, but you're still going to lose a match. And dealing with that, I think, is um, really what separates, um, you know, maybe not so much the beginner, but, but the good players from the great players and guys that are, are successful and win slams and keep getting better and have long careers is dealing with losses and being able to, um, you know, look at it as a learning experience and try to take, you know, even though it's really difficult uh, for sure. And, and I still struggle with that, but taking what you can out of it and trying to learn and, and improve. So, I mean, it's always constantly trying to get better, um, you know, and just make yourself the best player you can be. So it's obviously you're competing, you're out there by yourself or, or with your doubles partner and that's it. You know, I mean, you don't have a team around you. Um, there's no coaching. So, I mean, it's kind of a, a different or unique feel to tennis. It's an individual um, sport besides your doubles partner. Um, so it's just you versus them and, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of just, uh, mano a mano. So it's a, uh, it's a different mentality. And I think, um, you know, it's, uh, it's really unique and, and cool. That's what I love about it is you have to figure it out out there and, and, um, on the road by yourself, you're trying to make things as familiar as possible, or you're in a different, you know, different part of the world, a different time zone, obviously different types of food, different, um, different hotels, different beds, different, everything is different. So anything that you can control, um, you try to make, um, as simple as possible and, and take care of what you can control and kind of let go of the other things. So it's, uh, it's, it's a challenge every week, but um, that's what makes it fun. And, and I think like every other sport, I think the mental side of it is, is probably the most important aspect for sure. So yeah, Austin, like, so how, how, how do you like, what is the best way to deal with kind of like a fear or the failure that you talked about? Right. Like, because, letting go of it very quickly is important, right? Like letting go of failure is extremely important. And I think a lot of times what people do is they have a failure and then they, then they hold on to it and then they become fearful of doing it again. You know, like, you know, oh man, I can't, I better not do this again because that last time I did that, it failed, but it could have just been a one-off thing. It could have just been a timing. How do you, like, what, what do you do? Like on the tennis court, what do you do? Like, what, do, what is your mental process to say, I got to let that go? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a challenge for sure. I think, um, you know, just playing tennis for so long since I was five years old, um, you know, you're, you experience it so much that it just kind of becomes a challenge where you, you try to improve. I mean, um, um, yeah, I mean, you deal with it every single week. So mentally, I think uh, it's just a toughness thing. I mean, uh, for whatever reason, I've always been really driven um, to be the best tennis player in the world. So I, um, I just try to push through every week and, and it's just not necessarily, I mean, you have to have big goals, but I feel like just taking it step by step. So I think, you know, the 12 week year, which is a book that you guys recommend is, is an awesome, an awesome book. Um, and kind of breaking goals down into manageable pieces has been huge. I mean, it's, um, you know, obviously you want to be number one, but it, you can't do that in one day. You know, you can only, you can only tackle what's in front of you and, and take a step by step, you know, whether that's um, the point in front of you or, or the next meal, making that the most, you know, the best meal you can make it, making the next workout the most beneficial it can be um, and just kind of breaking it down 
into really small pieces has always helped me kind of push past that. And, um, but you know, at the same time, you've still got that bigger goal there that that's, that's giving you direction, you know, and then, and then the steps along the way, make it, um, make it doable. Um, and you need li- to celebrate your little victories for sure. Otherwise it, it gets pretty, um, pretty, pretty difficult. Um, it's a long path for, for anything, building your business in land or, or becoming a successful tennis player, or football player, whatever it may be. But, um, yeah, the, the, the failure is one of the more difficult parts for sure. Um, but yeah, it's just taking the next step, you know, and just getting up and, and, um, you know, no matter what, pushing forward and, and trying to just get better every day, you know, it's just the little things like that, 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 uh, keep you going. So. Hey, Mark, I was just going to say, just follow up on one thing. And, and one of the things that, that Austin mentioned, I think is cool is, you know, you have that big picture, that big goal of what you want to achieve. And you may not know how to get to that big picture, right? You know, like at, at any point in time, it, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you say I'm going to become a professional tennis player, right? Or whatever your goal is. It's not like, you know, all of the steps to do there, but you keep showing up and it's step by step by step. And I think that, I think that this is one of the cool things even about uh, coaching students or coaching with the land geek is the fact that the very first thing that someone's going to do when they enter into coaching besides flight school is they're going to get that strategy call where you go and you build that big picture and then you reverse engineer back to the small steps that Austin was just talking about. Yeah. I mean, Austin, do you see a lot of parallels between the land business and being a professional tennis player as far as the, 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 you know, breaking it down doing those steps, you got those, those five big buckets and land investing, um, being consistent with the mailings and marketing. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's, it's, um, you know, obviously it's two different, completely different things, but it, but it is very similar in, in, um, you know, I mean, you, there's always going to be some uncertainty there, um, with everything, you know, you don't know how it's going to work out, but if you can chunk it down into small enough pieces and, and just kind of believe or have faith in something that it's going to work out if you put in the work, I mean, tennis is a, is a very delayed gratification sport, which I think, you know, similar to land business, you put in all the work, you do all the, the little things with, with building a list, mailing every day, you might not hear back for a while or marketing all the time and you think no one's, you know, seeing your ads or you're not getting any leads. And then all of a sudden you might get, you know, that's kind of how my sales have been. It's kind of strange how it works out like that. It kind of bunches in twos or threes at a time. Um, but you might not get anything for three weeks or a month. And then all of a sudden you get three sales and same thing at tennis. You might, you, you might have an off season or a training block where it's two, three weeks where you work really, really hard. Um, you know, whether you're trying to work on a new part of your game or, or nutrition or get your weight down a little bit or, um, and then you might go to the next three months and not have very many good results. Um, but then all of a sudden you win a big tournament, you know, and it makes it all worth it. And, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a weird sport too, because everyone, everyone is always analyzed, you know, everyone is, is a little bit too emotional sometimes in, in each little thing, you know, every time you lose a match, you know, you get kind of upset and say, you know, oh, you know, he's not playing great or whatever it may be. If you have a couple bad tournaments in a row, but then you play one good tournament, everyone's like, wow, you know, Austin's been playing great. And it's like, well, you know, I mean, I've had a pretty, pretty difficult few months here. And, and, um, but it's, it's always, you know, it, it's delayed gratification. I think, um, sports in general, but especially tennis, because there's so many, um, so many tournaments and, and, um, you know, it's tough to, to have that long-term vision, but you have to be able to look, you know, six months or a year down the road and say, you know, if I keep doing the little things every day, um, it's going to, it's going to pay off, you know, and you have to have that belief. And like you said, you have to be a little bit crazy. Um, I think to play sports full time and travel around, but um, you know, you have to have that unwavering faith that it's going to work out. I and mean, if you do the little things right, you know, um, that, that everything else is out of your control, but um, just doing the, the things every day is what, it's what counts. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so, so now that you're in, in coaching, um, how does that differ from flight school and what's been your favorite deal so far? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it is a little bit different. It's great. I mean, the one-on-one aspect of it, um, having someone holding you accountable and you, you really feel like you're, you're working together to make your business better. Um, I think that's, um, you can't really put a price on that. It, it's, it's awesome. So I've really enjoyed working with Tate and, and having access to all the other coaches too. I mean, I've had a uh, talk with Mimi, Mimi the other day about Facebook and, um, you know, a few small issues I've had. So, fixing those things is, it's been great. I think it's, it really, uh, narrows down on your business and, um, you find the, the pain points and, and the weaknesses you have and, um, and improve on it, you know, um, 
at the, at the end of the day, it just comes down to work. So I feel like I've um, been able to really identify what I'm not doing well, and um, which is still quite a few things, and uh, you know, find a way to make that better, and then and then grow. So um, you know, one of my, I would say one of my favorite deals was um, on my way to Australia this year in December. Um, I had purchased a property wholesale the day before I left um, from another actually um, flight school uh, student. So we were kind of became. Uh, friends and we're talking and then I bought a property wholesale from him and the next day I was flying down to Australia so I was in the the lounge in LA um, waiting for the flight and I had about an hour so I was eating quick and I was on my computer and I was like oh, I'll throw up a Facebook ad real quick see if I can get some interest on this property threw it up and in like five minutes someone had responded so at this time I'd eaten so I had probably like 20 minutes before I had to run to the gate so I was talking back and forth a few times and um, she seemed very interested so I sent her the link for, for the geek pay down payment and, and doc fee. And, um, I sent out my deal a leak as well, uh, the day before that. So I, you know, said, well, a couple of messages at the last second, shut my computer, ran to the gate and was one of the last people on the plane. Cause I was trying to get a few more messages out. And, um, so it took off the 15 and a half hour flight to Melbourne, which is, which is, um, you know, a grind obviously landed. And when I turned on my phone, I had two down payments. Um, so she had made a down payment and then also um, another guy from the deal of the week had purchased a property. So it was pretty cool that I was on the plane, uh, headed down to Australia and made two sales. Uh, so that was kind of a cool one that, you know, I was kind of sleeping on the plane and a couple of melatonin and tried to make the time go fast and was, was making money while I was flying. So I was, uh, I was excited about that. Um, you know, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> nice. Now what was the ROI on those deals? Yeah. So do you remember the ROI? What's that? Sorry. The, the, do you remember the return on investment on those? Sorry, I broke up there a little bit. On the... Oh, uh, um, Scott, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Um, Austin, do you, do you remember the return? What the return was? I'm not sorry, I lost you there just for a second, guys. I think oh, I think maybe? Austin's having some problems. We have some internet issues. This this is what happens when you're, you know, a, a famous tennis star. There we go. It's back now. <laughs> Your internet's always little. Yeah, yeah, man, I, I you're never home. Good last week in Mexico, and I come home, and uh, and it's not working. So go figure. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, just the return on investment on those, on those deals. Do you remember? Yeah, so um, that property I purchased for sixteen hundred, and was able to sell it for for just over five thousand um, at a hundred a month. So yeah, it's a it was a good one, um, and that was a terms deal, obviously. And um, so, and the other one. Um, was actually I sold that for one fifty a month and purchased it um, at twenty two hundred. So um, that was good as well. So the sale price on that one was was just over seven thousand. Um, so yeah, so not not too bad. I, I'm still trying to figure out all the you know keep tracking and I'm taking Scott's um, accounting class now, which has been a great start to that. So I'm trying to you know get all the systems in place and um, you know I've, I've still got the ways to go to make it efficient as possible, but. Um, I'm getting there. So it's just, uh, it's one day at a time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a slow drip. You're, you know, it starts off as, you know, uh, grocery money and then, you know, you've got it up to, uh, you know, I don't know, like for your passive income, probably yeah, like so, vacation money or. Yeah. It's uh, just, over, it's just over 600, um, a month. So it's, uh, and I've had, you know, a, a, just recently a default that um, was my first going through that process, which was, was actually not that difficult. Um, but um, yes, yeah, so I dropped it just down to about that level, but I was getting pretty close to a thousand there. Um, you know, and that's, um, so I've got my goals with Tate and, and um, hopefully I can keep that growing and, and I definitely want to get it, um, you know, push, push as far as I can. So make myself a little uncomfortable with those for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So what does your dad think of all this? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, they, they didn't play tennis, um, but my dad played college basketball. Um, so they were both athletes. And my mom actually um, water skied professionally, Scott, uh, down in Florida. So she was one of the best swivel skiers in the world for a while. So they both were, were very athletic, but um, they're still living in Florida, actually, in Lakeland. Um, so working and so forth. But, um, yeah, they, they try to come to some tournaments when they can. They'll probably come to Miami um, here in a couple of weeks, that um, tournament down there. And, um, you know, they try to make U.S. Open every year in New York. And I think they're actually going to make it over to Wimbledon this year. So make it to London for the first time, which will be really cool. Um, but yeah, they, uh, you know, they supportive and, and um, you know, my dad followed me, liked the real estate thing quite a bit. So I think, um, you know, I wanted to, to see if I can get this kind of going my business and then I'm sure he'll be right there to 
to maybe maybe get in as well. So I'm I'm really hoping to make um, a boot camp here. I mean, obviously my schedule is insane, um, but um, but I'd love to make two boot camps this year to try to get into the the VIP room, which I've heard is is uh, is really um, a treat. So hopefully he can make it with me. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I I'd imagine you know if you know your dad's background of just buying you know uh, conventional real estate like Austin. <laughs> wrong land and like just kind of skeptical so uh, was, yeah. was he skeptical were you skeptical in the beginning um yeah i mean I, I think you always have to have some sort of healthy skepticism um but um you know doing the research and so forth i was a little bit fed up with some property management issues and tenant issues as well with the property that we did um buy so you know i think that was a, a, a breath of fresh air that we didn't have to deal with that anymore and obviously there's there's you know things you have to do in, in every industry but um I think the idea of passive income with real estate is, is awesome. And the way that you guys can turn the land um, business into that is, um, is phenomenal. So I, um, yeah, I, I, you know, now I'm, I'm all in and, and love the, um, love the process. And, and like you say, sometimes you have to embrace the suck and some little things that go wrong here and there, but that's uh, like everything, you know, you're building a business and, and um, that's all part of the process. So it's been, it's been a fun ride so far and I know I've got a long way to go, but um, you know, the good thing is I've got the, uh, the support system you guys have set up and working with Tate, um, you know, you'll be, you've got my back. So I'm excited about that and I'll, I'll keep trying to, um, to grow it. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, shamelessly, we're, we're going to get you that, uh, that land geek, uh, patch. Yeah. In the tournament. <laughs> you like, What's this all about? Um, so yeah, for sure. we're, we're going to be sponsoring him. He, he's gonna he's gonna have a whole land geek shirt out there and everything like what the heck man and yeah, mark's gonna be yelling at his kids i told you this was the big thing that's right exactly then, then my kids will be interested you know they're gonna get like an austin poster in their room and, uh, you yeah, know, I know. for sure that you know an austin fathead it's all gonna be about austin now so, <laughs> it's kind of cool but uh you know, Scott, what's, what's your takeaway from, from Austin's journey? Because, you know, for me, it's, I think when you apply those, that mindset that he has toward our land business, it's just inevitable that he's going to be uber successful. Now, given his time constraints and his traveling constraints, it might take a little longer, but it's just inevitable. Do you, do you see it that way? Yeah, Mark, there's, there's uh, one, one thing that he said that I think is the key takeaway for anybody. And I actually wrote it down and I wrote down a few things, but one of the things I took away from it was that he said that tennis was all about delayed gratification. That's the one thing. And so is his business. Honestly, and he, he's the one that said that. Okay. So the reality is, is that, you know, you, <sighs> People want to people want to push success fast, right? Like people want instant success. And even though they say they don't, like I literally I had to laugh the other day because I saw someone um, on I think it was on the Facebook group. They said oh, I've mailed out uh, three days worth of mailings, twenty a day uh, for the last three days. I'm surprised no one's called me yet. You know, and I'm like, no. And even through flight school, I see the same thing. People are like. You know, some people start to get some accepted offers back and then other people don't. And then they start to, they start to like that self-doubt starts to creep in as opposed to saying kind of cool, that's cool. But it's that four to six time, to, uh, four to six week time frame that we talk about to get an accepted offer back. And I think that when you, when you realize like, man, I'm just building, I'm just building a house one brick at a time and I'm going to build this house and it's going to be a solid foundation and it doesn't time time horizons are are garbage, man. That's self-imposed deadlines that we put on ourselves. Maybe it's because we can't stay in our jobs or whatever it is. But if you look at this from a very long-term perspective and play the long game, and you just do what I would say, like Mimi Schmidt did, Mimi just slowly chiseled away at it, right? Like she didn't have to be fat the fastest. She didn't care about being the fastest. And really, it's not a race. It's really about. I'm just going to keep chiseling away on this thing. And one day it's like you said, Mark, it's going to build up. It's, it's grocery money. It's car payment money. It's vacation money. It's house payment money. It's serious money, but it takes time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and hopefully, I mean, it sounds like Austin, you're enjoying the journey. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, 
Absolutely. It's been fun. And, and I, yeah, I really enjoy doing it every day. The little day things I try to um, beam some of my days to make it a little bit easier to remember no matter where I'm at. Um, you know, and we, like I said, we do have some free time on the road there. So if I can, as long as I can get the internet to work, um, I, you know, it's, it's great. I can um, do my mailings and, and do all the marketing stuff and reach out to the buyers list. And so I, I really enjoy um, keeping up with it and there's ups and downs like everything, but um, yeah, it's, it's been a great process so far. All right. Well, for those newbies listening, what words of wisdom do you have for them? Sure. I mean, like Scott said, I think delayed gratification is, is massive. Um, you know, one thing, um, one thing I do, rec- I, you know, I, I, reading so much like I did, I, I spent obviously a lot of time in all those books. I think um, um, Blinkist has actually been a huge help for me recently. Um, just being able to, I'm not sure if, if you're familiar with them, but um, they kind of do like 15 to 20 minute summaries of like key points of books and that's really helped me get through, um, you know, my reading list has grown um, substantially um, recently, especially listening to so many podcasts. You get, you know, books here and there, and you're always writing them down um, in my notepad to see, you know, make sure I come back to it. But Blinkist is a great way to kind of narrow them down and, and see what book really um, relates to you. And then from there, if you want to go more in depth with it, you can. But it's, uh, it's a great way to kind of, um, you know, just really amplify the amount of books you can cover and, and things that you can apply um, you know, to your life. So I think that's been huge for me. I've been able to, to really get into, you know, a bunch of books in the last just couple of weeks with, with Blinkist. So do you have a, do you have a favorite book right now? Um, you know, I, I did, I did really enjoy Dirt Rich. I've read that several times. One of the things I do like to do is go, you know, over books uh, multiple times as well. Um, but, um, you know, Rich Dad Poor Dad was one of the first ones. I know everyone always says that, um, but just developing that mindset, um, you know, I think that was a, a big one for me um, at the beginning um, and just kind of getting that mindset of um, making your money work for you um, rather than working for money all the time. So yeah, that was, that's always one of my favorites. I usually go back to that one uh, a few times a year for sure. All right, I love it. So yeah. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Austin gave uh, <laughs> three. Uh, okay. No, so no pressure. Well- uh, look, I'm going to be, uh, I'm, I'm, look, I'm going to do something I don't normally do. And that, that is this number. I'm gonna give two, but number one is kind of a, kind of like a no brainer. Number one is look, wherever you are on your journey, wherever it is, you seriously, if you want to build passive income, you need to learn about flight school. And, and I'm saying that not, not to be self-serving, but I'm saying it because I truly, truly believe it. Like, you know, we, Mark, t- tonight, actually, we are starting our 26th class of flight school, okay? There are literally hundreds, I think there's 400 people that have gone through flight school. These are lives that have been changed, okay? And it, it may not be instant. Like, you may not get done with flight school. I, I can guarantee you, you're not going to get done with flight school and have your, your, your income replaced unless your income is, like, very low. You won't, that, that's not going to be the case. The reality is that you're going to have the foundation that you can build a lifelong uh, quest to build the passive income. You can chisel away at this thing and day by day by day, just keep beating away at it and build that passive income. If you're looking for the ultimate job killer, it's passive income. That's it. That is the ultimate passive uh, job killer. So do yourself a favor, learn about flight school and take some action, uh, change your life. The other, the other thing, and Mark, I, I love this thing. Like, it, I think that everybody should go do this. Mark, you know, you know for a fact, I hate phone cases. I hate them. I despise them. I can't stand them. I walk around with a phone, like my super slim phone, my iPhone XS. It's super thin. It's beautiful. And then you go put a case on it, and it's big and bulky and I get Mark razzes me like no case on that thing, man. And then I drop it and it cracks. And I'm like, ah, and then I go get a new screen put on it. Or then the last one I had the iPhone X, it was cracked because I dropped it. And instead of going to have it fixed right away, I waited and then I dropped it in the water, which the iPhone is waterproof, really it's water resistant, but whatever. And it doesn't work if the phone is cracked. So there goes the whole phone. I get a lot of crap for it. And Mark, I'm walking through a kiosk on Sunday and I come to this kiosk. It's called the Zag, Z-A-G-G. It's the Zag screen protector. Oh yeah, I know Zag, yeah. So they have a kiosk in this mall I was at and they have this thing called the 360 wrap. It's a screen protector on the front, 
the screen protector on the back with a bumper, a bumper around it. And it's so thin, it's so lightweight. I'm in love with this thing. If you hate phone cases, go check out Zag. This is called the 360. All right, cool. Very cool. Well, my tip of the week is follow Austin's career. If you can, you know, go to New York, support him at the US Open, go to London, support him in Wimbledon. Heck, he was just in uh, Acapulco. It's a nice vacation and support him all over the world. However, if you don't have the wherewithal to do that, support him in his land business. Follow him on landmoto.com forward slash Austin. And you can see a professional tennis player concurrently working in the land business at the same time. No excuses, everybody. No excuses. If Austin can do it with his grueling schedule, you can do it too. So Austin Crycheck, are we good? Yep, we're great. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out uh, to share your, your journey with everyone. And um, if you are listening, it really helps us out. Please subscribe. Please rate. Please review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at melangeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course. Uh, it really helps us. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right. Well, again, I want to thank everybody. Are we, uh, we going to do the do it? We have to. Ready? We have to do One, it. One, two, two three. three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. Austin's like, man, did that was I was a good one. <laughs> Austin sat out. Jeez. That was a good one. Uh, I wanted to jump in, but I, I thought I'd let the, the professionals handle it there. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't blame them. I, don't, I, I, I almost sat out too, Mark. He, he's like, in my business, that's called a foot fault. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, well thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see everyone next week.